I know I know these people, dude. Like, who are Oh, you know. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> take it God. easy over there. Oh, take God. it. I'm easy. waiting. I'm waiting. Hey, but you know what? I'm not shocked. Just, oh, hey, just my God. Take, can you keep it together, please? Oh. All right, let's get started. It's Dan and Bill Zarian. Wow. Uh, it, I, you don't need an intro, dude. You're that guy, pal. <laughs> You're that guy. You texted me. You ju- you literally just came from Van Nuys Airport across the street. You said, I've, I've been on a four-day bender. Yeah, I came. I was in Chicago yesterday and then uh, partying the night before and, well, that night too. So, yeah, it's been uh, not a lot of sleep. I have so many questions, dude. Are you, are you tired Shoot. right now? I am. I'm exhausted it makes three of us pounding coffee and uh uh, trying to get this brain fog out fantastic well hopefully we can wake you up a little bit ask you some really uncomfortable questions get that adrenaline going yeah please do all the shit and and by the way bro um i appreciate you coming on the podcast you know we've been friends for a while you've always been good to me um you know i think before things really started going for me you know and and i appreciate that and uh i I remember some of my uh craziest la memories (laughs) It took place at your house. <laughs> yeah, you and your bro. Yeah, dude. It's yeah. it's wild, man. And, it, and it's cool to see you uh, evolve and branch out. And uh, the reason, part of the reason we had you on is because this book, the setup, dude. Indeed. You're yeah. an author now. Congrats. Fuck, man. Yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a lot more of a pain in the ass than I thought it was going to be. You told me that uh, I should read it. Yeah, yeah, I do recommend. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. There's uh, there's there's one problem, Dan. I I I I can't really read. I fall asleep. Yep. Uh, I haven't read a book in f- five years. Um, I am like, fucking exhausted. I was up till four a.m. Um, I did not sleep on the flight from Puerto Rico because I was reading your fucking book, bro. That's awesome, man. I read four hundred pages, dude. Oh, you read the whole. Oh, bro. wow. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty wild. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about it. What the fuck? Let's, yeah. I didn't know. I, I mean, like, I think the most fascinating thing to me is that, you know, we see what we see on Instagram. And for most people, it's a highlight reel. Yep. It's just your life. Well, yeah. I mean, it wasn't always like that, you know? I mean, obviously it was, you know, there's been ups and downs. But, yeah, the last, fuck, man, like the last, like, Three, four years in LA, I've been fucking balls to the wall. Dude, you make the Wolf of Wall Street seem elementary. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's, I mean, yeah, it was, it was fucking crazy. I mean, I really, like I said, I went balls to the wall for like three years. I kind of like do, you know, three years on and then I take like a year or two off, do like relationships, and then I just kind of fucking dive right back in. And the book was a good break. It was like a much needed break Mm because I had been just, Going too hard. Yeah. Too full long. throttle. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, we're going to dive into all of it. And obviously, like, I, I I like that I got to read this because there's a lot that I learned about you. And I think you and I uh, run parallel in in that um, you have a really good understanding of people, like the psychology of people and language. And I think those two things allow anyone, if you can master those traits, to be powerful. And I was able to kind of get into your brain. You know, for lack of better verbiage, and, and and it was cool to to understand how and why you think and why you do what you do. I, I want to ask you just just candidly, um, you know, because I I'll I'll tell you how I felt about this. But how do how do you feel about your your final product? I feel good, man. Um, you know, the last like ten edits that I did, you know, I was sure at the end that I was fucking done. I was like, okay, this is fucking perfect, and I'll go through and I'll just start fucking whacking it up again and um you know the book like forced me to look at my life and I didn't realize like how much of the shit that you know happened when I was younger whatever affected my trajectory later Mm. and uh and that was interesting and then also like just it, it also forced me to like look at uncomfortable and embarrassing situations like all the way you know shit that you like kind of block out like don't tell anybody you know I kind of had to like dive into that and uh and I think it was important, you know, I want to give people like the full, you know, understand. Cause I mean, I'm just like a fucking normal dude that's in fucking crazy situations. And, uh, and I think a lot of people look at me like, you know, this like, you know, almost like animated character or whatever. Cause my life has gotten so crazy, but I feel like I'm a pretty fucking normal guy. That's just like had a fucking really nutty life, you know? Okay. You're not normal. <laughs> 
Well, maybe not by like normal standards, but I'm just saying like, as a person, I feel like I'm somewhat normal, but I feel like I get put in these, like there's a lot of times when I felt like I was the normal guy in the room surrounded by fucking crazy people. Like this goddamn Sam, I mean, so many of these characters in the book that, you know, like I said, they were fucking out of their minds and I felt like I was like the voice of reason. There's and, levels to this shit, as they yeah. say. <laughs> Honest, honestly, I, I'm a <clears throat> fucking weirdo. I've been in rooms where I look around and go, these people are fucking weirdos. And I imagine you've been in that situation too. But I, one of the comments in this book, that, and one of my favorite parts about your book is that you'll recount a story and then have a vignette from the, a person mentioned in the story. So you get their take. And for me, a, a lot of the shit you say in here truly seems unbelievable. It, 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 it's hard to fathom. Yeah, and that's why I think the vignettes were so key is because it kind of like, it gives you you know, somebody else's perspective and also like really credible people too, right? Like, you know, Navy SEALs, uh, you know, girls I dated, doctors, lawyers, yep. celebrities, whatever the fuck ever, right? So everybody's got their own, you know, view on this stuff. And I think that was another thing, you know, I mean, I had to like be fully vulnerable. And then I also felt like I had to have those in there for people to believe because it was so fucking crazy. You yeah. Know? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I opened the, the first page of the book and the, uh, it says, for my father. <laughs> this was fucking hilarious. <laughs> for my father. Thank you for diligently proofreading this book. Sorry I didn't take any of your suggestions. <laughs> and then below that is a quote from his dad. If you release this book as it is, it will be an unmitigated disaster. disaster. Paul Bilzerian. <laughs> yeah, he, I don't think he's too happy about it, but it's too goddamn funny. <laughs> I don't think okay, so uh, before, again, I'm, I'm going to dive in, dude. Like, I did a full fucking dissection. And yeah. by the way, not because I fucking want it to, Dan. I hate reading. I Listen, I do too, man. I, I don't like reading. The only thing I don't like more than reading is fucking writing. So I was in hell for two years, <laughs> man. Like, literal hell. Like, I went 10 days without sex. Like... I wasn't hardly oh, getting no man. pussy. Tough oh, man. Oh, man. I, 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 pretty, dude, I went like 57 <laughs> days and only like, I did like no drugs. I mean, I like did a quarter tab of acid once, like smoked weed a couple times. But like other than that, 57 days, no drugs. You don't understand from like a you know sex addict like fucking three, four times a day to like, I mean, I know it doesn't sound crazy, but you know, if you're doing fucking heroin nine times a day and you don't do it for 10 days, it's a big deal, you know? So what, we, what are the witches? What are the witches? Yeah, I, I, fucking, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get it. Back me up here, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are the, what are the withdrawals look, uh, what are the withdrawals of sex? Addiction. Oh, that's a great like. question. Like, what do you what do you find happening to yourself when you instead of like going like this? Yeah, when you stop like fucking. <laughs> that is a good question. You know, honestly, um, I was so fucking like in this book that I I don't know, man. I, I just kind of like blocked shit out. Like, I didn't work out as much. It's just like a lot of things. I found that when I would train, it would take like three hours away from because I could I could work on this book for twenty fucking hours straight, but I would only have a certain amount of like good hours mm -hmm. where I was like making positive progress and mm -hmm. there were sometimes I mean you know you wrote a book you'll, yep. you'll spend time and you'll fucking be counterproductive right, right so right. there's like you have to like you know have the self-discipline to figure out like when to stop and it was uh it was shitty it was really shitty but I you know I just I kicked a lot of addictions I kicked like a gambling addiction a sex addiction drug addiction you know all this stuff and I did it all in the you know pretty much the same period so it was uh it was a hard right from what my life was before. Yeah. Personally, I've found it is really, really hard to balance uh, when I'm being creative and pursuing anything involving uh, my creativity or storytelling and fitness. Yeah. I've always been bad at it. it. Fitness takes a lot out of me, man. It does. It does. And I didn't realize like how, how like on you have to be to be like in that creative mm state where you're like you know you're focused and you're you're creative and you're you're coming up with new thoughts and your mind is working correctly it's just you there's just a you know amount you have and you know if you don't sleep good then the day is pretty much fucked and yeah yeah you know it's a lot so i i uh i had no idea what the fuck i was biting off i really didn't i just read goggins's book and i was like you know if this guy could write a book like i could write a book i mean yeah. not that like he's not you know a smart guy but i'm just he's a fucking you know navy seal like endurance he's not a writer right he was like he said in his book he's dyslexic like this whole thing and um we had a similar story too i mean we did like probably about the same amount of seal training he's probably like one of the only guys that has done as much seal training as me or you know maybe even more um 
and I just, you know, that, that part of his book really resonated with me and I knew I had like the girl piece of it too, which I felt like would be super interesting to a lot of guys. And then there was kind of the explanation of that. There was the fame, there was the gambling, there was just like so many different things that I feel like guys would be very interested in. So, and I've been meaning to do it and COVID came around and it was just is right it, time. It's a perfect it, story. Yeah, yeah, it really was. And by the way, that motivation is uh, not too uncommon for, for people to, pursuing a new path, especially for competitive people. Dude, the only reason I started on Vine was because I saw Marcus Johns, who you may not, or may not know, make a Vine, a kid my age, and he got fam famous, and I said, I, 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 why can't I do that? If he could do it, I could. Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. And, yeah. and it, there is something more to it, and, and I want to um, preface, like, again, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to dive in here, but uh, and, and I'm not saying this to promote your book, uh, but I think this is, like, I mean, this is... This is you, dude. This is like the this is like the Dan Bozerian everyone wants to actually understand and know about. Yeah. Um, and you're you're a, you're a really good writer. You, you are good with words, and you can you can your recollection of stories is actually a bit eerie because you remember every single detail. Well, I went through like forty years of text. I went through over a hundred thousand pictures. I went and I had like so many hours on the phone, like talking to you know old friends, girls, whatever, mm. and. It took a lot and I did, you know, but I had some help because I, I did some cartoons before. I actually wrote a, well, I didn't write a book. I had a ghostwriter write a book in 2016. So we went through this process, but he was doing the writing. Um, I actually didn't use any of it, but, you know, I kind of like put down some of this stuff, um, but I, I initially was a terrible writer and I think it's just, you know, it's like that law of 10,000 hours. Like if you do something enough, mm -hmm. you eventually get good at it. And man, I just, I don't know. I knew this is going to be out there forever. I knew there's a lot of people that wanted to know my story and, um, and it was an interesting story and I just wanted to tell it right. So I just did as best I could, you know? And I think you did a good job. We interrupt this program to bring you a word from our sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot going on in the world, whether it's stuff you're excited about or stuff you'd rather not think about. You can't always control the vibes out there, but you can always control the vibes in your head with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ear. Whether you use them to pump up, wind down, work, or work out, Raycons are my go-to for the on-the-go audio, and the new everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever with an improved rubber oil and look, look and feel and optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. These are impressive before you even start listening. You get three new sound profiles to make sure everything you're listening to sounds its best with just the right amount of bass, and there's also an all-new awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings instead. Raycons offer eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. There's also a built-in mic and you can take calls on your earbuds at the press of a button. They start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good, and Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. Right now, impulsive listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash Logan. That is buyraycon.com slash Logan to save 15%. Back to the program. However, I will say, and you, you kind of just mentioned it, um, a lot of guys will find this interesting. Yep. I found it interesting. I also happen to be a guy. I wrote a note, I annotated one note in this book with my left hand, by the way, and the, yep. it's, the handwriting is atrocious. Can't use my right right now. Um, wait, wait, what the fuck? Did you some, do something happened, but look. Uh, <laughs> he, hasn't, he hasn't explained it yet. My, 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 note, my note was this, I, I, and I say this in full sincerity, I don't think a single self-respecting girl will make it through this book. I don't know, man. I, it's funny, I, I thought the exact same thing, and I had a liberal, feminist that was an investment banker smart hot chick read that thing and she liked it you'd be surprised i feel like honesty resonates with people like but does you, she respect herself i don't know i mean she's successful i you know i don't that know that doesn't man. mean she I respects herself yeah did you have sex with her i did not i did not <laughs> fuck her no. do you plan on it <laughs> no I, I you know as my buddy's girlfriend no i definitely don't plan i don't on think that rules out anything for you dan <laughs> i've changed I said my I don't ways know. man i've changed my ways <laughs> i've heard this before I've changed my ha ways. have you though you i, I you know not completely <laughs> right but a little bit i mean i'm definitely not as fucked up as i was um, especially after this year. I mean, I'm kind of like a little bit back on my bullshit now, but I uh, I did like a year and a half monogamous. Like, yeah, with that one girl. One girl, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. Which, Are you guys still dating? No, or? we broke up. Um, she, was, uh, she was just young, man. She was young and she was cool. She was smart. Everything was good. But um, for monogamy, fuck, man. I, I think I have to have a girl a little bit older. You know, I mean, you just, even though she's smart, like you just had to be on this earth a certain amount of time for me to be able to, you know, I, I don't know, just 
connect. Get, yeah, get something. From, I mean, I don't know. Like, you have to be challenged, like, mentally. And if you haven't, you know, if you're fucking 19, how are you going to challenge me? I feel like I've had fucking dog years, you know, and I'm 40. Energy, so. we, we just had this, We just had this conversation. conversation last episode. We, we, were, we were talking yeah. about, like, these young girls, 19, 20, 21, dating older men. We, I have no idea how they can converse about anything relatable to each other. Yeah. This You're t- talking two different generations, experiences, wisdom, uh, perception of technology. Like, it's... Yeah, so, no... It's 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 tough, man, and and it's and it's also I'm like I don't know, man. I've like fucking painted myself into this fucking corner where I, it's such a high standard for what I find hot, and it's <laughs> you know an age is kind of like correlated that a little bit. So I don't know, man. I might be single forever. It, is I might there, be fucked. Is there any part of you that gets a little bit of enjoyment or finds a benefit in being the person that teaches this 19 or 20 year old or shows this girl the things that a lot of these other 28, 29, 30 year old jet setting females have already done in their life. Did you find joy in that? No, no, absolutely. And I think that's why I think a lot of people have kids too, is because they get to like show somebody the stuff, right? Like my brother just had three kids and you know, he gets to now kind of relive his life with mm-hmm. his kids. He gets to show him, you know, all the stuff that he did growing up and, you know, kind of gets to live life again. And, you know, there's a part of that that's fun. You know, I mean, it's always more fun to off-road when you have somebody else in the car to scare the shit out of. It's just more fun to do stuff with somebody that hasn't done it so they can, you know, experience it. And now, like you said, all the fucking girls, they've all traveled on goddamn jets. They've been on fucking yachts by, like, age 20. <laughs> These bitches have done, like, everything I've done. It's like, wait, wait what? Yeah. Um, so it is cool to find some that that haven't been, you know, damaged and jaded. But at the end of the day, like, if I'm going to be monogamous, it has to be somebody that's kind of on my level um, experience-wise. Mm. So. I found this interesting, and, and I'm curious. The girls that do stick around, what is it about them? What makes them the outliers? Because statistically, you know, when a girl gets involved in the uh, web that is Dan Bozerian, I imagine right off the rip, they don't stand a fucking chance. So the well, ones that do, why? I don't know, man. I, I think I'm a little bit different than other guys in the sense that, like, I'll keep a girl in rotation for two years sometimes, you know? And I feel like as long as I don't, like, fuck them too much or, you know, without hooking up with other girls, like, I don't really get tired of it, especially if it's been two, three months, I kind of forget, and it's like fucking a new girl. And so if a girl's cool and she's hot, yeah, I mean, a lot of times she'll kind of, like, come back around. And I'm always honest and open about all my shit so they know, you know, what it is coming in and they're having fun. And if they want to come back, it's usually, you know, they break up with a boyfriend and they're fucking blowing me up. You know, it's like I'm all the bit like, fuck you, I guess, to these guys. But I don't know. I, I've, like I said, I've, I've kept a lot kind of like in a rotation for longer. Most don't, but some do. You, you, know? you make it seem so easy, but, you know, as somebody who's been around enough people that work in that way, the management of, of that <laughs> size of a group of females <laughs> is not simple. Dude. As much as you're transparent and honest with them, there's always going to be jealousy. There's always yeah. going to be envy. Envy. He fucked her better. He likes her more. How do you? How much time goes into the management of this army of females <laughs> that you that you have around? That, that's a great question, and the answer is too fucking much. Right, <laughs> like absolutely too much, which is why like I needed that break, you know. And so I think I just probably wasted a lot of fucking time and that's why i just i'm so envious of these guys that fuck hookers because they just don't (laughs) waste any time it's like this chick is coming up orders them like a pizza fucks them leaves no mindless conversation no hours of texting no jealousy no nonsense like they show up on time none of it it's just like and and it's the purest interaction (laughs) right like they get what they bargain for the guy gets what he wants like it's probably the purest transaction out there and uh it gets a bad rap, um, but it's, you know, for me, it's just kind of like, a, you know, I, I just have to feel like the chick wants to fuck me. And I don't care why, but it just has to be, a, you know. I wanted to ask you about this because somewhere in the book, uh, and I can relate to this, like uh, prostitution, I just don't, it's, I don't want, I get it. I have no desire to uh, have sex with a prostitute. And, and I read that about you as well. Yeah. But then you'll tell these stories about, you know, like you walking into a room and like a girl's naked on your bed you know spread eagle <laughs> ready to meet the dan b uh big dan the big dan b but isn't that just like to me that's just as much of a turnoff dude like See, if a girl if a girl's doing that 
Like she, <laughs> dude, she threw that to everyone. I, I feel you on that, but I don't care why she wants to fuck me. That's the thing. I don't care if it's the fame or the money or you know to get ahead or I just or to make her boyfriend just. I don't give a fuck what the reason is as long as it's not fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like because look, I, women have different attraction mechanisms than guys do. Like if 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 you're a woman and you're smart and you're funny, it's not gonna make me want to fuck you more. Like. It's gonna be based on how you look, like your tits, your ass, your face, your body, whatever. It's purely physical. Yeah. Like the, the other shit can only like be a detractant. You know what I mean? Like if you're, you know, if the if the girl's stupid, then you know, it can like make me maybe want to fuck her less. Um, but it's <laughs> it's just purely physical. Whereas women, it's it's different, man. Women and like they've and with evolution, they've been attracted to guys that are like, you know, make them feel secure, that they, they can provide, you know, all these things, powerful fame, you know, all these different you know, traction mechanisms. So with women, it's definitely not purely physical. So, you know, and honestly, physical is probably, if you think about it, like if you really break it down, that's probably the most superficial reason, you know, to like somebody, mm. right? Because, you know, it's just like this person's born good looking or not. Mm. So if- Or the they got the work done to, to make it- to Yeah, in LA, exactly. But, you know, if a woman like looks at this guy, he's like, oh, he's smart, you know, he's interesting. I, you know, I connect with him. He's, he, you know, he's a powerful guy. He's, you know, been successful. He's, you know, whatever. And that's why she wants to fuck him. I mean, to me, that seems like less superficial Similar. than just like, oh, he's a hot guy. I wanted to fuck him. You know? But it, it's also not always so cut and dry because you do have women out there who are fucking based on uh, things as, you know, useless as good looks or whatever you want to call it. And then you have guys out there that are only hooking up with girls that they have an intimate relationship or intimate connection with so it's not always as cut and dry as as guys like looks and girls like it's more know, rare though yeah it's for more, sure i feel like guys are like mostly i mean at least me anyways i mean i'm like purely physical i mean as far as fucking i mean dating might be different but as far as fucking it's 100 percent physical mm. for me you've been riddled with this question your whole life i'm just gonna ask you right now <laughs> you think you're a sociopath <clears throat> I don't, man. Like, I, I felt bad when I, like, killed birds and stuff, you know? So I, I know that I'm not. I mean, I definitely have compassion. And, you know, I saw that because I, like, grew up in a family. I talked about this a little bit, you know, in the, in the beginning is, you know, my grandfather, you know, it's like if you saw an animal, it's like, oh, let's see if you can bust him. Not like that's a, you know, beautiful animal. It's like, you know, you just, you know, he, he killed animals, he's a hunter, whatever. Um, and I would feel bad. So I, I definitely know that I'm not because of... So so check this out then, because I, I find this interesting. And before you came here, I was, I was talking to Mike and George about uh, the duality of you. And in, in that way, like you, you do <clears throat> have emotions and, and, and feelings. And, you know, I, I read your book. I got inside your brain for a second. Um, and, and a lot of your friends, you know, will ride with you until the end. These, these vignettes talk about like how when people get to know you, as I started this podcast, you're that guy, pal. Just like the the a friendly, loyal guy there to the end. Um, and then at the same time, and this is just me being honest with you, like I I don't know like how like doesn't it doesn't don't you get hurt when you see the hurt when you, in these girls' eyes? Maybe when you don't give them the time of day or kick them out or treat them sort of disrespectful. You know, I actually treat them pretty good. You know, I mean, there's definitely going to be hurt, obviously, but. At the same time, you know, I got rejected by women a ton when I was younger. You know what I mean? So like, so fuck them they, all, right? Well, not really that. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, people are gonna get hurt, right? Like, I mean, and a part of this, like, a part of the reason why I was able to get laid so much is because of the jealousy and competition and stuff like that. So, I think you know, it's it's one of those things where if you hit on a girl and you're aggressively hitting on a girl, it's gonna make her not want to fuck you. I mean, this whole like thing that Hollywood perpetuates, like you know, go, you know, kiss a girl's ass, do whatever the fuck she wants, buy her flowers, you know, be her bitch, whatever. That's what Hollywood puts out there. And that's just like all the wrong shit. And it does not, it, like women don't respond to that. They just don't, you know, like if you, if you do that, they'll, you know, look down on you. So, so, try, so, try hards don't get, so yeah. I have to put an asterisk here. Like it, any generalization of anything, I, 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 I red flag. And like yeah. when we're talking about the women that, uh, you've surrounded yourself with. Do you feel that there's a uh, difference, or there's a a caliber that other women may hold themselves to that the ones that you hang around don't? That may demand more, more respect, more yeah. time, more attention. For sure. I mean, I think like the modeling industry in general, um, 
is kind of you know more superficial. I mean, it's girls that basically they put a lot of their value based on their looks. And since I want to be around hot girls, you know, I'm around a lot of models. So I think a lot and and for you know for a model, it's like where do you really go with that? You know, most models end up dating a rich guy. They end up you know trying to you know pursue modeling until it doesn't work out. But it's not really like a long term goal. Mm. And so I think you know in general girls that go into that profession probably don't have the highest you know moral compass or strongest moral compass whatever so yeah no i would say that i'm probably around girls that but you know at the same time i've seen other girls you know doctors lawyers whatever girls that have like respectable jobs married like do the most fucking wild shit you could ever imagine so i don't know you know <laughs> just you can't you can't box the 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 what women want into something simple yeah. every every girl wants something different right i was i just want to ask you do you find yourself semi protected by the high level of transparency that you exist within so like he he said you know it, when you look into these girls eyes and you see that pain and that hurt do you find yourself protected by the fact like these girls kind of should have an idea of what they're walking into when they enter Dan Bilzerian's life your entire instagram feed is you surrounded by hundreds of women you've been extremely transparent about not being the guy to get married or lock a certain girl down. So do you feel a little bit less? Yeah, I do. Because I feel like a lot of my guy friends in LA that get a lot of girls, they probably hurt girls more because the girl thinks there's more correct. of a chance. Like when you're dating a girl, she's probably like, okay, like I could be the one, you know? And she's probably more hurt than a girl that I'm dating that's, that's one of 20. <laughs> Making a great point. Great you know point. what I'm saying? So like, you're probably putting more pain, but it's not your fault. <laughs> like, what are you supposed to do? The only thing you can really do is lead with honesty. I That's mean, at it. the end of the day, like, you're not gonna marry every girl you fuck. So, you know, and and if you, unless you bang her, you know, two pump and fucking out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's probably gonna come back for more. So I, it's like one of those things where, what are you supposed to do? I mean, you know, I don't know. I th like I said, I think the only thing you can really do in this world is just be honest. And if you lead with that in a relationship, you know, and the other person gets hurt, well, they get hurt. But I mean, it was eyes wide open. It's kind of like, you know, if you, you know, get into a boxing ring and you get your fucking nose broken. Well, it's like, you know, you kind of knew what you're signing up for. Like, it still sucks, <laughs> still hurts. But like, do you, do you ever fuck that up? Do you ever say tomorrow you can bring your toothbrush to the house like tomorrow you could bring your dog to the house and then you say fuck why did i why did i do that i'm pretty good about like putting parameters on it like when i invite a girl out it's usually for you know like i mean if i know her maybe a couple of days but like if i'm initially meeting her i'm like hey i got an hour i got two hours i always set these time constraints you can always extend but then you're never kicking a girl out you know she's always expecting to you know leave because you got other shit going on so mm -hmm. um yeah i mean i you know as I did more and more of this, I kind of like got better at it. You know, I got trapped in situations and you're like, okay, I don't want to get trapped again. Like taking a girl on vacation you've never fucked before. Perfect example of a goddamn horrible trap, right? <laughs> She's got all this power now because if she doesn't want to give you pussy, well, what are you going to do? Jerk off. So that's like a horrible mistake. I feel like a lot of guys make, you know, you, take, and you, you don't even make those mistakes. Have you perfected I did. this? I'm, well, I made all those mistakes. You know, I think like the one exception would be if you really wanted to fuck a girl and she was like one of those girls that was kind of hard to get, like taking her in a nap or something where, you know, you're just both gonna get hammered there's nothing to do but have sex like that might be the one exception of like taking a girl on a date that you've never hooked up with um but yeah that's you know live and learn bro you how have you not been me too i mean like i said man just totally fucking open with my shit you know and i have video cameras in all my rooms like and also i take a different approach too like i don't pursue girls so the girls that are coming are like, you know, they're fighting to hook up with me. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you set that parameter and you set that, you know, um, stage, it's different than when you're like trying to trick a girl into fucking you or you're trying to like, you know, hold the carrot over her head. Like, oh, if you fuck me, you can get this job. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a lot of these guys did is they, you know, use their position or they use their job to, you know, get girls to fuck them. And then the girls, you know, had remorse later. They're like, oh, I shouldn't have fucked that guy. You know, even though I got the $7 million from fucking Steve Wynn, or even though I got the role from Harvey Weinstein or whatever, you know, later on, they, you know, get pissed off about that because they feel like, you know, they shouldn't have done it or because they felt like they had to do it to get the job, you know, but I'm not like, you know, fucking putting chicks in movies and stuff, so.
you're you're probably opening DMs from girls that say let's fuck or or yeah, whatever. I mean, you know how the DMs are, man. It's <laughs> fucking like how do you how do, how do you how do you sort through them? By the I way, I don't. I don't really go through them too much. Um, now they have you know the feature where it's like you know by you know followers, followers right? Yeah. So it's like you know you have less bullshit. But even then, it's just, you know, I mean, I have to go through fucking 90 guys asking to hang out with me and fucking give them money <laughs> to find, like, the one chick, right? Because then there's, like, you know, five ugly chicks. I don't know. It's not really worth it. Yeah. If I was Bieber, it probably would be, you know? He's got probably the opposite, like, 90% chicks and 10% dudes, but. Dude, <laughs> there's a, there's, I want to ask you this because I thought it was so funny reading the book. And, like, bro, I'm not coming at you. I just want to know. No, ask and you're boy, And you're man. so honest. I. <laughs> <laughs> there was one section where um, Jay Rich, who we both know, yep, uh, he said, uh, we've had many viral videos and photos, and he never wanted me to Photoshop him. He just wanted me to capture moments. But then I had this very vivid remembrance of this one photo you posted. <laughs> A Cardi B. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. You photoshopped Cardi B. You, you made like a half pipe. You made her like skinny or something. <laughs> I did. I don't know how to use Photoshop, but I'm saying I had fucking jizz on my shirt, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, un, I, you know, don't Photoshop me. Don't fuck with me. I'm saying like, but yeah, I don't know. She said she didn't like the photo. I, you know, he unfatted her. I don't fuck it. Wait, wait, it was, know. it was. She prompted that. Uh, well, she said she didn't like it or something. Like, I guess he had sent it. I mean, this was like all like, you know, my team to their team kind of thing. And I guess, um, you know, they had sent the photo and she didn't like it. And then he had like, you know, touched it up and sent it to her. Oh, no. And she's like, you know, I don't know. And, and then they said, okay, it's good. But then they posted the original. I don't know. Didn't man. the girl like, in the background. Me, it's like, I don't give a fuck if Cardi B looked like she was 300 pounds or fucking, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not hooking up with her. I don't care. Like her fans aren't going to be, you know, less into her. I mean, I don't think that's like a thing. Right. But I, I just thought it was funny because he said that and I was like, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Right. Didn't the girl in the background get the treatment too? Yeah, like there was a girl in the background the that like background. really slimmed up. Yeah. She was just standing at a counter. Well, for sure. right. <laughs> Every girl in the picture, they lost yeah. twenty pounds via face tune. No, no, he, they, yeah, they went a little overboard with that. But yeah, no, I mean that was kind of the thing. You know, I feel like a lot of guys, you know, they Photoshop their shit. Or they want. Do you? Look. You you highlight your abs? You bring your hips I in? You whiten your man. teeth? No, I got these fake ass teeth brought on into white and these <laughs> he has a whole chapter called losing my hair i don't think he's, it's, he's not lying it's clickbait about it's clickbait i read it it was because i went right to that chapter yeah, yeah. i went i want to see what this i want to see what this is like this fucking guy because I'm, I'm gonna lose my hair eventually I am right you're now. you are right it's now happening right now he's it was he was stressed playing poker and you ran your fingers through your hair you lost 40 follicles no but so it, was, it was legit i mean it was like you know for your actual hair to fall out that it's like a pretty serious stress response you know Dude, so the dynamic of poker, I'm not a big poker guy, but something I didn't think about, and I think it, when, no, now actually, um, that it's shaped like wh what we see yeah. and who you are, is um, you talked about how at the poker table, you can have the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, and that's where you've experienced some of your highest highs and lowest lows, except you can't show what you're feeling. Yeah, man, it's like that absolutely had an effect on me, a negative effect, because you have to truly mute your emotions. Because when you're at the poker table, if you're internally celebrating when you're fucking winning a hand, then when you lose, it's like, man, you got that much further to fall. And also, you kind of look like a jerk off celebrating, you know, when mm. you're playing with a fucking rich dude. And also, it makes him less, you know, prone to want to lose more money, right? If, if you don't give a fuck, then he's like, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. But if you're like over there clapping and fucking jumping up and down, he's like, I don't want to give this motherfucker one more <laughs> dollar, you know? And so a big piece of like poker for me was always, you know, I had to kind of like, you know, um, you know, make sure those relationships were taken care of. You know, like with Sam, I put up with a lot of fucking bullshit because I'm beating the dude for like tens of millions of dollars. Um, like the motherfucker would call me up and be waiting at his fucking house or 40. Just shit that I would not put up with from any other motherfucker. Mm. I would because like, you know, I'm beating the fucking dude for money. So kind of made me a little bit of a bitch to these guys. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, like I just I wanted to fucking win, you know. And so that that guy, Alec, actually, he just... Um, he saw my Nelk Boys podcast and he uh, he texted me. He's like, you know, he's like, I said it was, I said I beat him for like forty to fifty million, and he's like, oh, the number wasn't that high, blah blah blah. He's <laughs> like, you know, this and that. Like, I want to play you like heads up. Let's see who has the bigger ooh, balls for like twenty five million a piece. And I texted him back. I said, dude, I, I beat you for five point five million. I beat you for seven point seven. I beat you for ten point eight. I beat you for twelve point whatever. And I beat you like four or five other times for like small numbers. It was a hundred percent over forty million. And I was like, and I'll play you for 20, 25 million at the Aria if you want to fucking wire it in next week. And then she's like, oh, I don't want to play for unless it's 50 or 100 million. I was like, I'll wire in 50 million to the Aria in 10 days if you want to play and we can televise it if you want. 
And so he's challenged me twice and I've accepted. So, I mean, I think we might fucking play for a hundred million dollars, which would be like the craziest, biggest oh my game God. Can we come watch that? Yeah, I mean, I, I want to fucking pay-per-view the motherfucker. I, I was going to say, you, you have to. You you have, you, you, you live stream or something. That's fucking amazing. No, I mean, it would be the biggest poker game ever played. And the beauty of that is, like, it just shuts the fuck up everybody that was, like, talking shit. Like, you can't win this much money in poker. I mean, like, and I never really cared that much, but I have all the fucking wires. Like, it's mm. not like maybe it's not. No, I know exactly what i beat this motherfucker for i have every incoming wire and i fucking you know i posted some posted, i put a picture yeah. of the motherfucker ben. i put the wire fuck you know what i mean all of it it's not like maybe you know it's and, and you don't have to be a fucking genius to fucking beat a super rich guy for a lot of money if you're playing high stakes you know and he, and he had won i think like 700 million dollars that year beating another billionaire so like these games do exist these like idiot poker pros just they don't have access to them you know and so a big part of poker is getting into those games just playing with fucking bad play because at the end of the day like you know with with boxing it's like you know you, you want to beat the best boxer and whatever but then you know maybe you take your brother's approach he just wants to make the fucking money and mm. i respect that you know mm. what i mean like yeah okay he he didn't fucking go eight rounds of floyd like you did respect for that but he's made a lot of fucking money still mm. you know like and and, and so it's like you know, there's a lot of fucking boxers that are probably better than your brother that aren't making that fucking money. Your brother in boxing is me in fucking poker. Mm. He's picking the right opponents. Yeah. And, and you're and this is where I started the your psychology of people and knowing what table to sit yourself at. Cause correct me if I'm wrong, you're 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 a pretty good player. Yeah, I am good, but I'm not like amazing. That's like what I'm like, saying. like at the time that I was playing, I was really good. Now these guys are way better as far as like, you know, understanding the game, like fundamentals, GTO, the whole thing. But at the time I was playing, I was pretty fucking good, but I was playing with horrible players. Mm. You were, know? Do, do mm. you sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna ask, were you playing mostly in casinos or at these these high stakes like LA, Vegas games? Because I've heard about some of these fucking games in LA and I heard they're they're nuts. Yeah, I heard the like, shit that goes on in them are, are crazy. Yeah, it's absurd, man. I was playing Molly's game. I played, you know, Cassavetti's game. I was playing, you know, a lot of heads up. Like, a lot of heads up with... I mean, look, just between fucking Alec and Sam, there's two guys. I mean, that's over $50 million in one year. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think people really fucking get that. Like, I don't think they understand. Like, mm. $50 million, two guys, and a probably a total of, like, 20 fucking sessions. You understand, people. Why do these fucking billionaires throw money le like this repeatedly with you if they continue losing like I, what's the thrill well there's ego right i mean that's that's a big piece like you want to beat somebody okay. um and also for them it's like does the does like 25 40 million really matter if you got two billion dollars like i mean yeah it's like you know i'm sure it stings but they didn't lose it in one session mm. right he's like you know mm. at first it was like a couple million then he upped it you know then it was you know five and a half you know, then we played a little bit bigger. It was, you know, 7.7. .7. And then, you know, towards the end, it's like 5 million minimum buy-in, 10K, 25K blinds. So, like, the money that I was winning actually wasn't a crazy amount for how big we were playing. But he was playing really bad. So, you know, it was – but I also could have <laughs> lost. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like this was a lock. Like, I really fucking put my nuts on the table, you know? So, yeah. it was something that I feel like a lot of people probably wouldn't have been willing to do. And yeah. if they lost once, that this is the scary part. If you lose, then where do you go? Like, are you going to go back and play the fucking kitty games? Or are you going to come back and play this guy? And then if you lose again, what do you do? Right? Are you going to fucking lose a third time? Because then, you know, we lose a fourth time. You know, we might be fucking broke. Now you're in trouble. And then what the fuck do you do? Now you just lost $40, 50000000 million. You went from being a fucking relatively rich guy to now being completely fucking broke. I mean, like, think about that. That's a lot of stress, dude. It's horrifying yeah I, I, and that's well, what I, mike madison said in that I, in that I, yeah. book like the the hardest thing for him was having to drop down in stakes it's fucking horrible yeah, and yeah. like most people don't understand that honestly most people don't understand like any of this stuff unless they were a stock trader or maybe like a crypto guy or something mm. like what it's like to put your money on the right horse and just fucking lose because of luck you know because mm. that's what could happen in stock trading i mean who knows right a bank could fucking fail like who would have thought you yeah. know bear stearns is gonna fail like who would have thought you know, China was just going to fucking ban, you know, Bitcoin, right? Like, there's just like things that can happen. And then there's recoveries or whatever. Like, can you sustain it? I mean, do you still fucking stay in the game? Like, do you, you know, panic sell your fucking crypto or mm. do you hold? Like, mm. 
And it's like that in poker too. Like you have some fucking losses and it's like a big piece of this is also you have to like bankroll management. This is not like, okay, you have $10 million. You don't really have $10 million because you need to play poker. So you have like, okay, maybe 2 million, but then we're putting 8 million to play with. And then if we lose, then how do we adjust that? And like, you know, mm. there's, a, there's a lot to, that goes into it. It's not like an easy lifestyle to, you know, kind of like navigate. So, so okay, your intelli intelligence is uncanny. It's uh. It's probably it's probably your number one asset. If if I'm being honest with you, I think I think you've been able to navigate just. Well, certainly not my looks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a man's man. There, there's a sentence in here. You're, you're, I mean, bro, you you make money. You're famous. You you shoot guns. You're like a guy's yeah. guy. You know. So I, I I see why girls would be attracted to you. But um, the fame is a big piece, man. I was gonna ask you, fame versus money. It's what, which not one even is, close. Yeah, so fame. here's the thing, man. Like money. I mean, you know this, like money is probably like 20 or 30 times if you use it right. And when I say use it right, I'm not talking about fucking buying bitches Birkin bags and fucking tricking off and being a retard. Mm. Um, and I'm ta not talking about going to the club and spending 30 fucking grand like an idiot. I'm talking about like, you know, setting up your life, whatever. Like some of these fucking rich guys, they buy a modeling agency. They're just like surrounded by fucking hot girls now all the time, whatever it is. But like using that money, you know, maybe you go on vacation, maybe you have a couple fucking promoters bring a bunch of chicks and now you're on a yacht with, you know, 20 hot girls. You know, that is a, you know, good environment to get laid. So there's ways to use your money. And then there's, you know, cause, but there's also a lot of rich guys that don't get any fucking pussy, right? So money is a tool if you use it, but, Fame is just different, man. Like fame is a thing where you could get laid in spots where you never otherwise could have. Like, you know? like geographically, or like what, what, what are you talking <laughs> about? Like in a porter body? I mean, yeah, in a porter body. <laughs> you know, like just you know, fucking you know, some like married chick in a in a hotel lobby, like just crazy shit that like people wouldn't even think to do. I mean, I talk about some of the stuff in there. You know, like fucking a girl like stone sober in a fucking you know bathroom, like just shit that. People probably wouldn't even try, you know, things that work, like opportunities that come up, situations. It's very strange. I mean, just the way people react. And I talk about it in there. It's just like it's your, like something in there. Your, your breakdown of fame was interesting. It's, yeah. uh, <clears throat> again, I'm like regurgitating. And by the way, I was like, it's kind of drunk on the plane. Best, best way to travel, <laughs> by the way, especially if it's a long day of travel. Uh, but it was, it was almost like when, slash, if you're famous, there's like a level of trust that the community or society like almost places in you, like you've ta undertaken some sort of responsibility or, or have been through things that most people haven't. And it is that thing. hundred percent. It's, it's like, it's like if you went to Harvard or you went to Yale, there's like, you know, the people on that campus are going to like, you know, put you in a category, right? Like if you're, in a certain group or a club, it's like, you know, you've pre-qualified yourself, right? Bingo, and that's what it was, yep. Fame is like the ultimate, you know, pre-qualifier, right? Yeah. That's like, it checks all those different boxes. It's like, okay, this person is, you know, he's, he's popular, he's looked up to, he's respected, he's, you know, all, all these, you know, social proofs, right? And so it's, it's one of those things where whether they like it or not, they're gonna be affected by it. It's yeah. so, it's so funny because, um, I'll, I'll let you get the start. No, that's good. But, uh, so I, I was, um, the opposite, right? You have money first. And then I also found it fascinating how you literally just decided to flip a switch and, and say, like, I'm going to go okay. try to be famous. It was an experiment for all, <laughs> everyone who doesn't know. Dan Bozerian getting famous on Instagram was an experiment. Uh, Rich Guy's experiment, it fucking worked. Um, but I've always had the, the fame first. So I, I know the dynamic of that and, like, what that does to people and specifically women. Yeah. But, and even now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like this, but having... Having money is 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 it's so different, so interesting. I had a um a jet to Tampa once, big jet, G G five fifty. And uh uh I was at catch and I was talking to some guy and I, I was like, Yeah, I'm jetting to Tampa tomorrow to go do some stuff for the WWE. He's like, No way. I'm with two two girls that are going to flying to Tampa tomorrow. And I'm like, this is weird and perfect uh, can i say hi to them walked over beautiful girls and i was like hey i heard you guys are going to tampa uh, i i have a jet if you want to come on and <laughs> talk to look in these girls eyes they, they were like I mean, you, like are you inviting us on the jet and i was like i mean yeah you'd have to cancel your flights but we got room we got seats if you want to come and it was the first time in my life where i was like holy fucking shit money 
changes well, hold on people a in general. They, like, what if they knew that it was Logan Paul with yeah, money? I mean, do you know also, what I'm saying? No, but it was, it was a, and well, and it, famous. No, but no, because I don't. I don't assume that they know me. And they, I, by the way, I still don't know if they did beforehand. Maybe they, they heard did. my name. They, yeah, they, they definitely did. They you know did. why? Because they're like, hey, Logan. Like they were. Like, no, I mean, no, 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 no. Here's the thing, dude. I you, like. I don't know, man. I would say it's probably the fame and the looks also because there's a lot of rich idiots with jets that can't fill it with girls. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's not a you know, a positive. I'm not saying it wasn't a tool. I'm not saying it. It's didn't like help an icing on the cake. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, I, that I had not experienced before. But that's also a pre qualifier too, right? I mean, that's kind of like you know, one of those like you know, you have a jet, so like you know, or you rented a jet or whatever the fuck it is. Like you're on a jet. It's you're somebody. Your, you know, yeah, you're somebody. Like it costs a lot of money. Like charting a fucking plane, owning a plane, whatever it is. Like it's like fucking expensive. Success is attractive. It is, yeah. right? And because, and, and for good reason. I mean, like you succeeded and succeeding is not easy. It's, it's like- It's hard, dude. It fucking <laughs> is, man. It's fucking hard, man. <laughs> yeah. but, to Dan's but to Dan's point, like the money, famous people are never going to the money guys to pack the jet. It's always the opposite. That, yeah. There's not one time that I can remember where we were like, dude, we really got to meet up with these hedge fund dudes because they're <laughs> filling their fucking jets. <laughs> it's always the opposite. The billionaire always, and I and my, my, I guess one of my questions is, that's probably one of the reasons why these billionaires keep coming back to these poker games with you, even though they're losing. There's got to be ancillary benefits of sitting down for three to four hours with Bill Zarian. So that was another reason why, you know, that was kind of like another reason why, you know, I wanted to really kind of go forward with this Instagram shit is because I felt like the more they, you know, associated me with girls or this lifestyle or whatever, the more they wanted to play and the more they'd be willing to fucking lose money. I mean, I know that was true with Sam. Um, you know, the more pussy I get this guy, the more he wanted to fucking play poker and this and that. And so there's definitely a piece of that. And I think like a lot of rich guys also want to be around famous people. I think they're usually jealous of that. I think they've got money and they expect people to care more than people do. And so I've found, you know, when rich guys are around famous guys, a lot of times they get insecure. They want, you know, you could see that like oh, they yeah. want to be fucking famous. They want to be perceived as important. So a lot of times they'll want famous people around so that, you know, eyes are on them. I mean, you know, money gives people a big ego, man. And, and and usually people that have had, you know, a lot of success are, you know, competitive. And so, you know, a lot of people say that they don't want it, but then they see how much power it has and then they fucking want it. It's like, it's like two different parts of it. There's, I think there's scarcity in fame that doesn't exist in money. There's a lot of rich motherfuckers out there. There's not quite as many famous, famous people, right? And then I think there's also, like you said, power, but also an intimacy between you and the and the the person that's coming to see you. When you find someone that that has a ton of money, you're not immediately drawn or or enamored by that person because of their bank account. Maybe well, a little. Well, bit, here's another here's another piece of that too. Is like they're replaceable. So yeah, if yeah. if if you're if you're a thirty million dollar guy. What happens when the fifty million dollar guy walks around? <laughs> what happens when the billionaire walks in the room? You know what I mean? You're fucking losing. But your that happens chick. with yeah. fame too, though, because uh, when it's because when it's Logan, he's running the room. Then Drake steps in. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, this, the dynamic changes. You're dramatic. losing your big booty girls, maybe, but I'm saying the rest might be safe. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, yeah, I, there are there are levels to the fame for sure. No two ways about it. But it's like you said, a lot more scarce. You know, yeah. and it's also like a it's, it's a much more like definable thing or like you know a specific thing like if a chick is super into you know fucking drake she might not necessarily like kanye's music i don't know or yeah, fucking yeah. you know toby keith or fucking whatever <laughs> right like you know what i'm saying like somebody that's really into a certain famous guy might be into him because of his acting or his music or whatever it is that that person is famous for there's Leash. different art but there's the same money What's that? Is that what you're saying? There's different. Yeah, different money is yeah, like yeah, easily yeah. replicatable, okay. right? And there's yeah. so many other rich guys. So it's like, you know, if you have 50 million and that's like, you know, your, you know, claim to fame, it's like, okay, well, there's a lot of other people that have that, right? But if you've got five number one singles and a Grammy, you know, there's not as many that are going to, you know, have that and in, in, in that same genre. They might not, you know, whatever, right? So I think the fame is a, a bit more specific and intimate. Can I ask you some direct questions? Absolutely. <laughs> About about who you slept with? Um, yeah, I mean, I might not answer, but yeah, I, go ahead. No, I'm asking you to answer, but we'll bleep out the names. Go ahead. Who is the Baywatch girl you slept with? I don't remember her name. Okay. Yeah, true story. Really? I swear to God. Damn. Yeah, I, uh, I would I would actually tell you I, that one. I, I what about who was the um, 
the famous uh, Instagram model with tens of millions of followers that you had a, a threesome with. Uh, oh man, you will know this motherfucker. I'll tell you, but I'm not putting it on fucking air. No, no, no. We'll bleep the name. You trust me? I would. I will fucking text you. <laughs> I'm not saying that shit on this mic. Text, text me right now. Okay. And you will know exactly who this motherfucker is for Can sure. Can I lean over and see? But hey, you cannot put the fucking shit on Of course on not. Of course Your word. Not. My word. I okay. swear to God. Yeah, I'm, right. This isn't like a gotcha It would podcast. never happen. It would never happen. Yeah. I Because I, I like I know I know these fucking people, dude. Like who are Oh, they? you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, hey, take it fucking God. easy over there. Oh, take God. it fucking I'm, I'm easy. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Hey, but you know what? I'm not shocked. This, oh, hey, this my God. Sick. Can you keep it together? <laughs> but are you shocked shocked uh, yeah are you I, yeah. I, I am kind of too that's actually awesome that's actually awesome great yo, great great yo, girl yo you are this shit god what yep not to be oh, aired. I need a second no because the, no, the audience hates when this happens I'm sorry what's your next I gave him my word What's your yeah. next one? No. I didn't. It's no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's, that's, I, wait, can I ask one in the interim? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I was just gonna ask. Do you have a favorite of all fucking Ooh, time? Man. Because because Ooh. let me let me tell you, as someone who, and I as know we, we had it. Well, not only that, but as someone who, and this goes back a little bit, has had, you know, a little bit of fake beef with you at one point for yeah. allegedly hanging out with some of the girls. I, by the way, I never had any fucking I know shit. That. I just I know, I know. some some girl was like, "Oh, this guy's talking shit or something." I was like, <laughs> "Fuck him." Okay, well, fuck it. that guy. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I see a tweet that's like, "Yo, actually, I don't. This guy could actually come to the party." I don't know. Well, yeah, you you like made a video, or you you were like, "I was not talking shit. I have no issue with this guy." I was like, "Okay, well, cool then." What and, and Logan vouched for you? So I was like, yeah, sure. So bring, bring the fucking guy. By the, the way, party, I, I regret vouching for him. <laughs> Just don't break this shit up. Well, you did. He he, he vouched for you. So it's like, all right. I wouldn't anymore. Such you an would, yeah, so, okay, fair so what? So what I was going to ask you was, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of girls in that group, you know, having spent time with uh, a bunch of them, that would claim to have been the favorite. Oh, he was, he, he, you know, proposed to me. He said I was his favorite. He locked me down for this amount of time. Is there a clear standout in your mind? It's crazy, man. A lot of girls, they just like make up, like I, I I'm like, you know, fucked a girl like a couple times and she'll tell people, oh, he was in love with me. He was this or that. Like this girl that I kicked off the fucking boat for banging a waiter or something. <laughs> like, she was like up into that point, like telling everybody like, oh, Dan's in love with me. Like all this shit is so crazy. That was, that was weird. So uh, just filling y'all in, uh, you kicked the girl off the boat. She went to a club, fucked the waiter, video herself, herself doing it. You did read the book. I That's did. good. Dog, my, my man. <laughs> 400 pages. That's impressive, dude, in one fucking day. Do you want to know something, actually? So I'm I'm, I'm eventually going to be, uh, you know, publishing something. And I, eventually, probably so, regarding my life. And uh, the, the, I'm just being honest with you. The one, the one part that was tougher for me when I was like, ooh, I'm reading. And this is like, I feel like I'm working to read. Was um, your backstory. For some reason... I found like the, the military shit. I found whatever. the Dambozarian that I knew on Instagram, and like, yeah. and I've been following you for years, just like you know everyone else. And if they're not following you, they're still watching, yeah. as you said. And so it was really cool to see the experiences that went viral and all these photos and the stories behind them. I found that much more intriguing yep. um, than than uh, the backstory. So the first hundred I, I missed. I no, mean, no, I I get it, man. And I was kind of like struggling with that too, because like a part of that, it's, I it's I felt. Long. It is, it is, man. Is there foreshadowing your story in the future? Yeah, like a lot of them were kind of like integral things. Maybe I went too long in the military stuff. I just felt like the military stuff was, um, it was pretty impactful. And there's also a lot of misconceptions about it. And then there's also a lot of intrigue. I think I probably put a decent amount of military in there because Goggins' book was like so military centric ah. and it did so fucking well. So I was like, oh, well, people really want to hear about that shit, whatever. But um, yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying, man. I, I think, you know, a lot of people probably are going to resonate more with the stuff that they have some kind of like, you know, association with. I was going to ask something. Um, oh. You need most, that stuff most, too. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Most famous woman you've had sex with. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, ah, God damn. I guess it depends on how you define fame. Like any you know? A-listers? Um. B no, probably not any like A list. I would say more like B. Mm. 
I can't say that name mm. though. Mm. All good. Is that by design to an extent too? Like, do you find yourself really get that attracted to like A-list like actresses? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not. Like, here's the thing. I'm more in the circle with the guys. Like, I feel like the A-list women don't probably go to the same (laughs) events as me. You know, no, no, Dan, they do. But you leave those events. It's one of the every professional like suit and tie event. That's like nice. We're like these. I'm like bailing. you're you're out within an hour. Fucking snoring. I'm bailing. Yeah, no. I was like I was snoring during fucking Obama's speech. Like yeah, I just man, I I don't, do not like like the fucking Art Basel too, right? I, I read you like left in. I hated it. I hated. It. I hate the I, I envy suit that. And tie, like, I envy that. that bullshit, man. I just yeah, I don't like it. But um, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know if I would. I don't even know if an A-list celebrity chick would want to fuck me. I feel like they. Prob- I mean, when you get a list, you're pretty like hidden out. I feel like like they go to shit where like they have to be seen going to shit. But for the most part, I feel like they're pretty private. I mean, you know, as like as you get more and more famous, you just really like can't do as much. I mean, you, you can, but like you know, you're going to a photo shoot. Like for me, I made this commitment where every time a fan asked me for a picture, I would take the picture unless I was like getting either bombarded or in some crazy hurry. So I take all the pictures, mm-hmm. man. Like, so that's a lot, you know? And I, and, and I don't mind it because I realize like, it's just a small amount of time for me and like, it makes an impact. And yeah. I realized that with like, when Denzel gave me a compliment on my death, it was like, he said one sentence to me and it's like stuck with me, you know what I mean? So it's like, I realize how like, you know, much of an impact some of those things can have. So I just do it. But at the same time, it definitely makes things fucking restrictive and irritating. And like when you're at dinner with your family or you're just, you know, out, you know, and having like people fucking staring at you, I don't know. It's just after a while, like it's kind of fucking irritating. You know, you feel like you have no privacy. Mm-hmm. I uh, mentioned this earlier. I loved these vignettes from the people you uh, told these stories about. My fav- favorite one, and this shocked me, was uh, from Lindsay. Really? That was a, yeah. I, I thought the story was hilarious. That I'd was like, a good one. I'd like to read it. Yeah, if go possible. On, go I'm gonna. Ahead, I'm, I'm just gonna take a second to narrate. So Lindsay P- Pellis. Yep. Um, she said, "It's hard to choose a memory that stands out most when they're all pretty stand out. Our poetic first time meeting at the Playboy Mansion." The time your plane caught on fire, snowmobiling in the Colorado mountains, Vin Diesel and Ludacris partying at your house, love that. Or maybe the time you were filming that PSA for the government because you blew something up that you shouldn't have. That was funny. I guess my favorite thing about you is that it's so hard to believe you're actually a real person. People always ask me, is Dan really real? Is all that stuff he posts really true? I can confirm the weapons, the women, the pyrotechnics, the wild animals, the sex, the weed, the fun, and the fantasy are all true. One time we were on a plane landing strip in snowy Colorado. The plane had two faulty takeoff attempts, and we were stuck waiting for the fire department to see if the plane was too hot. As the firefighters came to take the temperature of the aircraft, the brakes caught on fire. Everyone on the plane ran out in a frenzy. The pilots, the chef, models, and friends. As we stood watching the plane get hosed off, (laughs) hosed off. (laughs) That was a hot (laughs) fucking plane. (laughs) Jesus. Dan was nowhere to be found. Where's Dan? Where is he? Why isn't he coming out? Everyone was rightly startled by fire and the freezing cold, and even more so by the fact that Dan Bilzerian must have had a death wish. What kind of human being wouldn't immediately run out of a burning plane? Was he stuck? Did he get lost? Did he have another heart attack? (laughs) And then, after what felt like three hours, but was probably three minutes, Dan emerged. There he was at the top of the G4 stairs, wearing a long coat, his signature combat boots, and a black tee. Only now, he was holding a bag of chips. It became clear to the rest of us, at the same time, that while we were outside scared and shaking, Dan had gone back further into the burning plane for a snack to appease his hunger. He took a slow gaze to the left where the firefighters were putting out the flames, gave a disapproving nod, and ate a handful of chips. It was at that exact moment I realized Dan was fearless. Like, fearless, fearless. Not just fearless in the way people already knew about, like his affinity for blowing shit up or making bets that would cost normal people their homes or retirement funds, but the kind of fearless where death isn't even scary anymore. A man who's seen it all, done it all, and is afraid of nothing. And then the next sentence where you chimed in is, I had totally forgotten about the two high-speed aborts we had leaving us. It's her most memorable story of you, and you forgot about it. Uh, yeah, oh, I kind of like blocked it out. <laughs> you know why? Because this was too. So I, I, I don't want. I guess I'm just recounting the story, but it's fascinating. The reason you stayed on the plane was a pride thing. 
Yeah, I was like embarrassed. I was irritated. I was like fucking That mad. your plane blew up. Yeah, exactly. I was like, <laughs> fuck, you know? <laughs> like the captain goes down with the ship. I was just not coming out. It says it wasn't really that I was fearless. I was worried the plane could explode being that it was on fire. I was just so irritated and embarrassed by the situation <laughs> that my pride triumphed my self-preservation. <laughs> I figured like the captain who goes down with the ship, I would stay on. And if God wanted the shit on my head, then so be it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, true story, man. So are are you afraid of death or was that just a one time thing? Uh I mean I'm not I well, I mean, I have I think a you know, very natural fear of death. I mean like when I do, you know, risky shit, obviously I'm afraid like anybody else, but I don't really think about it too much. Um in that situation I like I said, I I just uh the ego was more powerful, um and I was just angry and um and embarrassed and I just was like, fuck it. I feel like your ego fuels a lot of your decisions. Yeah, that's why I like mushrooms because it fucking removes that from ego the equation. Killer. Yeah, and I think like ego decisions are usually not the best. What do you like on mushrooms? I like the fact that I have the answers to my questions. I like the fact that my ego is removed. I like that. Um, I think things are more clear. You know, like I think you get fogged by a bunch of shit that actually doesn't really fucking matter but you mm -hmm. think in your mind that it does and you have so many fucking distractions um and when i'm doing mushrooms i leave my cell phone and i just kind of you know i don't know i just figure shit out you texted me or you messaged me when we were in iceland you said y'all better lemon tech some mushrooms while you're out there what is that process about so if you cook the mushrooms in lemon juice for like 20 minutes it basically like it, it, it activates a psilocybin, I guess, oh, in a way shit. that like your body would have to do it, but it bypasses that step, so it's faster. And I think it's a little bit more intense, and then you actually don't even have to eat the mushrooms. You can just drink the shot of lemon juice. Um, I learned about that in Iceland with the Icelandic mushrooms, and it was pretty fucking awesome. So, yeah, I've been doing that lately. Is that stronger than tea? Because I thought tea was supposed to be a similar uh, approach. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mm -hmm. just, I mean, I, I did a little research online and it seems like it's gotten good reviews of lemon tacking. And uh, so, yeah, I've been doing that lately. You doing mostly micros or you could just uh, hero doses or what? Some heroes here and yeah. there. You know, for, for me, I think, um, I don't know, man, like, like Cowboy Cerrone, like that fucking dude, he was like microdosing mushrooms before fights and shit, which yeah. I thought was pretty fucking That's probably badass. why he got the shit kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I yeah, don't know. No ego, but, though, so I, I didn't really feel bad about it. Yeah, no, he's, you know, he, he, he definitely... <laughs> he had no ego. Like, All right, it's Dude, a good whatever. <laughs> My opponent did a great job. <laughs> no, but I mean, I think with the, I think with the microdosing, I, I had better results on acid. Um, when I microed acid, I did like maybe a tenth or an eighth of a hit. Mm -hmm. And I, it was almost like Adderall. I felt like I was like very fucking Zoned clear, in. locked on. Yeah, I felt like... I don't know. There, I had been like trying some backflips or whatever on a wakeboard, and I just felt like when I did that fucking thing, acid, it just kind of like that removed the last little thread of fear, <laughs> and I was able to stick it. You know, so there's been certain things where I feel like it it allowed me to like break through barriers, or I don't know, and it, and it allows your mind to connect, like all your brain to fucking connect in ways that it couldn't otherwise. So, well, that's one of the things that psychedelics are like proven to do is reconnect those damaged pathways between p parts of the brain, so it reconnects like those bridges that are damaged through trauma, stress, you know, dr other drug use, right? So it's 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 a repair process for the brain. But it also tears down that that frontal barrier of all of that bullshit that fogs your subconscious mind. Yep. So that's why you're fucking locked into exactly what you would be thinking without all of the fucking stressors of the of daily life. The second guessing, the fucking yep. ego, the blah, you know, all this other shit, you know. I will say microdosing as long as it's microdosing, I think could work. But I, I know a lot of people who got lost in the sauce. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe they microdosed a little too much, too many times in a row, day after day. And like, I get it. You know, it's a plant. Weed's a plant. These are drugs. Yep. These are drugs. Oh, yeah. and, and just like anything, if you don't, you know, control in moderation, you're going to overdo it. And like when I'm going through your book, I don't I have no idea how you do all the things you do, all the substances <laughs> you take barely sleep and work out i was usually pretty decent about the sleep i've always had a hard time sleeping but i usually tried to allocate a decent amount and then i think also i didn't drink and the drinking i think is a lot rougher on you you're right than a lot yeah. of the other shit you yeah. know so I, I went overboard with the weed and i found when i did the book and also when i was just in thailand and traveling and whatever that when i didn't 
smoke weed as much. I was definitely clearer. I felt like I slept better. Um, but there's a withdrawal period, and I think that's the confusion for know. yeah mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Like they'll they'll smoke weed, and it'll give them you know uh, you know it, it'll give them relief from anxiety, or it'll help them sleep, or it'll you know all these things. But then when they overconsume, I feel like it exacerbates those things that they were trying to then fix, right? And then they get into this rut where like me for Valium, I was taking Valium every night to sleep, and then when I wouldn't take it, then I really didn't get shit for sleep and i didn't realize the half-life was like fucking 100 hours or something so i had to like Mm. kick it for a full week and so i've battled a lot of different addictions and and people say that weed is not addictive i i just disagree i mean maybe i'm just an addictive guy but no no i disagree as well i think it's 100 it is psychologically and mentally because like i'm just like waiting like okay can i get high now i've got my shit done like is it you know is it time and i feel like yeah, it, it just, I don't know, man. I, I just absolutely believe that weed is addictive. And maybe it's the new strains or how they've fucking fucked with it, but whatever I'm smoking now <laughs> is addictive. I, I'm, I'm on like week two now. No, no, I'm I'm like 11 days of like no no weed. And I, I've realized two days in a row now, I get really irritable. Like I get really mad, short-tempered. Mm-hmm. Like because two there's day, nothing two days to like get quit. me to reveal. No, I'm 11 days off now. And I thought seven St- days. Still. Oh yeah, I haven't smoked. Wow. I no, 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 eat. still, still getting irritable. So I didn't have any problems. So I was like, oh, ad- uh, weed isn't addictive. And so like eight days is good. Nine days, I was like, fuck, because like the things that I would want to get away from my thoughts, because that's why I started smoking weed, is because I can't sleep one, but I want to get away from my own thoughts. Yeah. So like if I, I overconsume myself with too many questions. So when I can't do that now, I sit there in my own fucking thoughts, and I think that's what makes it addictive, is that you know that there's something you can do to just get yourself off of it. It's, it's so funny <laughs> how it serves a different purpose forever. Like, I smoke because I'm diving into my thoughts. I want to dive in the deepest parts of my brain that I, I didn't feel like I had access to, although I probably did, and this is just me rationalizing and justifying why I smoke weed. But my withdrawals are also... I get irritable. I, 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 have a, I, I get a gag reflex. I brush my teeth, and I'm like... Whoa. I lose my appetite. I like It's the weirdest shit. But what? But the same thing we were talking about with with the shrooms and the LSD. Any psychoactive like weed is going to remove that frontal barrier. So the reason you're able to di- dive so deeply into your thoughts is because you're not dealing with the the second guessing and all the bullshit that would normally come with it. And for you, THC has the longest half life out of the drug game. And so you may have a delayed withdrawal experience, eight it, days, because THC stays in your system for your, thirty it can days. Get in your after fat and oh, shit, exactly. Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah, it's stored. Yeah, THC stored in your fatty in yep. your fatty cells. So, oh, bro, it's so annoying. That's it's why so they can. T- that's why you can pop on a you know drug test for THC like fucking forty five days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas coke, it's like two days. Two you three know days. I mean? So it's like yep. when it when it stores in your body fat, then. I think when you work out, it you know can release that, or when you burn that fat, I think it's you know one of those things where it's kind of like that's so small funny because that was the day because I was gone with him and I didn't get to work out, and the day I got really mad was the day I was working out afterwards. It, that's really weird. I'm learning about this out, yeah. the more I go on. What about what about um, boosters? Because back to his question, you you don't sleep a lot. You definitely have abused your body severely. <laughs> <laughs> over the past several decades. Probably overdosed on dick pills and had two heart attacks. <laughs> what? Okay, and let's jump into that. But I wanted to ask, like, what uh, what extracurriculars on the positive side are you currently taking? I, I, I had a little run where I was getting some of those test shots in my ass every fucking week. And I I didn't like the idea of starting in my mid-30s, so I kind of stopped. But yeah. have, are you taking tests? Like, what kind of things are you, are you using? Yeah, so I, um, I started taking tests man in my fucking 20s and i basically kind of like started treating it like hrt yep um so i didn't take a lot but i just stayed on um so yeah i've been on tests um low doses but what's your dose uh i was doing 100 milligrams every five days and then i moved it to every four days so pretty fucking low um but enough to where you feel you know like you're 20 years old you what you know what your level is about it varies. I do blood work pretty regularly. Um, it's I, around like nine hundred. <laughs> <laughs> the range is the range is three fifty to like eight hundred. No, so no, like no, you're no, you're you're no, definitely it's, at the it's, highest. No, 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 it's, it's four hundred. It's four hundred twelve to yeah, twelve hundred. Like oh, like, like okay, Tyron sorry, Woodley was like eleven hundred or something. Like, but but to be at nine hundred is not super common. Like, do you know what yours is? It was five hundred the last time I got. And I'm about five thirty. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it declines with age, and I think it's like genetic. I think black guys have higher tests, um, okay. for sure. I think it's like a genetic thing. Um, 
And yeah, it just, it helps, man. It's not something that, you know, is something to fucking look over. I mean, it's a big deal. I mean, it's your recovery. It's, you know, putting on muscle. It's, it's a whole, whole fucking, you know, a lot of things. And so I think once you start declining, I mean, most of my friends that are like 40 and over, they're just on, on, on. Just getting the know? shots. And yeah. I, and I think people like on the Rogan side and stuff like that, they're all, they're all running it too. I don't yeah. know if Goggins does, but like. I don't think he does, but he fucking should. It's so strange to me, guys like that, that are like so into fitness, and this is such a fucking edge. You know, I guess with him, it doesn't surprise me as much because, you know, he doesn't do any drugs. But guys that are out there like snorting coke and doing ecstasy, it's like, why the fuck would you not do fucking tests? You know, yeah. it's like, here's something Talk. that's going like, to Yeah, especially like super that's into fitness, point. right? You're like doing all these drugs that are fucking you up. You're not going to do like the one that's going to give you some like positive. Does it feel like cheating? Um, Does it matter? For me, I've been a whatever it takes kind of guy, you know? I've never been like a, oh, I want to follow the fucking rules and do everything right. Like, I've never given a fuck about that. Like, for, you know, when Lance Armstrong got busted, I was like, fucking so what, you know? Right. We're like fucking pissed off about it. But I think in almost every one of these sports, they're all fucking juicy. All taking shit. They're doing like designer drugs. They're taking stem cells. They're doing HGH. They're, they are doing a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like who gets caught, who gets away with it. Um, and to me, it's like, I just think, man, people should be able to do whatever the fuck they want. You know, there should probably be like parameters. Um, but like, why is it fair that Tyron Woodley has a naturally occurring 1100 and some fucking guy from Kentucky has to do it with a natural 400, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, is that fair? I'll tell you what's not fair. Being a fucking UFC fighter and losing to a YouTuber in a boxing match. <laughs> so I guess that high Apparently that high, high test, test doesn't work. fucking matter because you got a tattoo that says, I love Jake Paul on your finger, bro. Your test, no matter what the results are, to me, is zero. He failed you failed. You tested test. and you failed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a question for you. Do you ever feel like because you're always living in the future, <laughs> I feel like every decision you make, you're always thinking about how it, how it, with poker or with uh, you wanting to be famous, all these decisions you make, you kind of always are living into the future. Do you ever get lonely with that? Do you ever feel like you're, I, you're not satisfied? You're not. It's definitely a mistake, you know, and I think that's a very common mistake that people have where they're not actually living in the moment. I think the phones and the social media and all that stuff make it a lot more difficult. I mean, you're just so distracted. I feel like people never feel like anything's enough these days, you know? I feel like everybody's looking at what everybody else is doing and they're setting these like super high fucking, you know, benchmarks for what is you know the kind of the minimums or what they want to achieve and so i think it's you know it's pretty common um where people are more focused about their or more worried about their future than what they're doing at the present moment so yeah i'm probably as guilty of that as anybody i was gonna say that like you know normally we'll have a guest on and they'll say you know facebook or instagram is is perpetrating this certain lifestyle via their technology or their approach Nobody's more guilty of making people feel shitty about their lives than Dan Bilzerian. Like, let's be completely fucking honest. You know, do you ever do you ever feel guilty about that? About all these, you know, nine to fivers or, you know, or, or the idea that these people may, you know, feel a certain way because they don't have what you have? Do you ever feel uh, like you wanted that? That's an interesting question. I, you know, for me, it was always kind of... I don't know. I, it was like bucket list, right? Like, so when I made a bunch of money, I was like, you know, I'm just going to fucking put this online. I'm going to do everything that I wanted to do as a kid that I <laughs> couldn't do. Like my parents had money, but I didn't have access to that money. So it's like, I just wanted the fast cars. I wanted to fuck the hot girls. I wanted, you know, just all this shit. I wanted freedom. So I just, just went fucking hard. And, uh, I wasn't really worried about whether or not I was probably negatively affecting other people or not. I felt like it was like watching a TV show and they were tuned in and I was kind of just only really worried about myself, to be honest, as far as that goes. I wasn't, you know, I didn't even consider it. It wasn't even like a, you know, am I, I mean, like later I kind of like looked at that. I'm like, you know, I don't, I definitely don't want to like have a net negative impact on the world. That's one of the reasons I wrote that book. So I wanted to like set it straight and give people like the full story. Cause I felt like they had the Instagram story. They had like the highlight reel, whatever, but I wanted to give them the good, the bad and the ugly. I mean, there's plenty of fucking embarrassing shit in there. There's, you know, plenty of stuff that I feel like people probably would not have, you know, put out there. And so, yeah. And I, and I also touched on like, you know, doing you know the charity aspect and stuff and like how that probably i mean i touch on there pretty deeply on pleasure versus happiness and i think a lot of people get caught up in pleasure seeking i mean i was fucking head on into it you know and 
I don't think that's going to equal long-term happiness. And I don't feel like a lot of people understand the difference between pleasure and happiness. So I tried to fucking outline it pretty good in there. And I think I did a decent job. And I think I'm one of the few people that can actually tell people, you know, that the pleasure seeking isn't the fucking answer because a lot of, you know, I mean, Bill Gates tells you, be like, yeah, okay, who's the fucking hot chicks you've been fucking motherfucker? You know, what do you know about this shit? You know? So it's like, from a guy that's done it, I think they have a unique ability to then speak to people about like, okay, you know, I've done all this shit. It's fun. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the answer. It's not going to lead you to happiness, you know? So, um, and, and, and I think understanding the difference between pleasure and happiness is very important because pleasure functions like a drug. It's like, you know, you get that spike, but then you have to do more to get the same spike. And then eventually you just have to be doing it to not feel like shit. And I feel like pleasure seeking stuff is very similar in that sense so how did you revert and 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 find that thing that was the through line that made you happy or um, did you? Or, no, or, or did you i didn't really find the happiness i just figured out that the pleasure stuff was not the answer like because i took it to a fucking level where i like i went beyond what more was better see for like a period it was like more was always better mm. like i took you know two chicks on vacation and i'm like banging one chick and the other one's just sitting there and she's getting jealous so it's like it wasn't the best and then i took three and then you know that was a better dynamic because i could bang one and the other two could hang and whatever and then four was better and five was better and but when we got to 30 <laughs> it was not better it was a fucking headache and i was like pulled in all these directions and it wasn't you know it, it wasn't more enjoyable and so i went to the links where it actually became you know um detrimental to go further and so i think once i got to, i don't think a lot of people get to the end of the road you know, and I went to the end of the road with pleasure. And so I think I have a unique um, ability to understand that that's probably not the fucking answer. Yeah. What, what, what's what's next? Like if you wait, what are you you talk you talking about religion? <laughs> nice. Tell me? We, we coach in the witness here. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with this. He said, can I ask him this before the podcast? I said, yeah, I'd like you to ask him that. And now's that. Ch I, now's I, the time. I asked a lot of those questions. I think it was, right? are you happy? Was what was oh that I didn't want, like in the most respectful way. If you could, listen. If you could go by, back. By the way, just before you 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 go on with this, there's really no real questions that are off limits. Like, yeah, of I course. don't really give a and fuck. I told oh, him worst, this. Worst That's man. why I went, like yeah, I thought yeah, he'd yeah. get the hint. Don't worry about offending me. Like okay, you yeah, can yeah. talk about like pretty much fucking whatever. I don't I don't care. I said this before you, you walked in. Oh, I, I, like, I said oh, I read the book. I don't want ever. No, no, and I and I appreciate that. I really do. I just. But I'm, you know, I, I think it's probably the most interesting podcast when you ask me the tough questions and I'm cool with it. So yep. yeah, whatever. So I um I look at your life obviously as like as everybody else does from an outside perspective. Uh do you ever feel like what you're doing is at the end of the day is like is from dust to dust, right? Like you're never gonna take any of this with you into the next life. You ever feel like there's nothing that you're doing is solidifying like your true happiness to you and not what everybody else is? Because I feel like what you do is trying to chase your goals but it's also to like make everybody around you go like motherfucker i did it this is me but are you doing anything for yourself that's making you truly happy yeah i mean i think you would like the book because I, I do talk about that in there and i touch on you know a lot of this stuff it's like you know towards the end with the ignite stuff i felt like i was doing it to impress people i felt like i was kind of like trying to one-up myself i felt like because you know it was about marketing my brand and it became more about my company back when i was doing this in like 2014 15 it was just about fucking hot girls and having fun and partying and buying shit and whatever right it was, there wasn't like any any company there was no business and so i just did whatever the fuck i wanted to do whereas with ignite i felt like i had an obligation to be promoting this brand and the best way to do that would be continuously kind of like one-upping myself because i felt like social media was my best outlet to you know promote this so i, I just kind of felt like I got stuck on a fucking treadmill of just trying to one up myself. And that's where I got towards the end of the book where I'm like, okay, I'm on this fucking 300 foot yacht. I'm with, you know, 27 girls. And it's like, I'm miserable. What the fuck? And so I was at a weird spot because I had a public company and I had shareholders and all this stuff. And I like had an obligation to promote the brand. But at the same time, I was like doing stuff that I didn't really feel like was what I wanted to do. And that was always what I said I wouldn't do was, mm. you know, do stuff for, Inst you know, cause it was yeah, always like, it. yeah. And like, you know, initially it was like, you know, I told Jay and I told, you know, my photographers and all the people, I was like, look, I'm going to fucking do my thing. If you get a shot, cool. We're not setting up shots. We're not going to fucking reshoot shit. Like if you get it, you get it. If you don't, it's gone, whatever. Like, 
And I think because of that, I think the stuff was, you know, very authentic and it, it was organic. And I think like the internet just sees through bullshit. I think that's why like a lot of people have tried to imitate me and a lot of people have like tried to do a similar thing and it just doesn't work is because they're like paying girls to show up and they're like orchestrating these fucking shots. And it's like, it's just not realistic. It's you not know? That's, not, not, that's not what's happening. You're not fucking all these girls. You know what I mean? And <laughs> if you are, they're hookers and whatever, like you're not actually doing it. And so I think, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of a fucking long-winded answer to your question. I went off on a tangent a little bit there, but no, but it was good. It's deep. And honestly, I did not find you to be this deep. I really did it. And I'm not trying to disrespect you. No, no, like, dude. Watching you from an outside good. perspective, I'm like, all right, all this guy cares about is money and pussy. But it it seems to me that you're trying to figure out what is the what, what's the meaning of life. And I feel like life was given to you on a platter, and now you had it all, and you still are very confused on what well truly it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think I was probably, I don't really have too many regrets because I think that nobody in the world could have fucking convinced me of what I've learned myself, if that makes sense. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, I cannot relate to that yeah, more. More than that. Right? So like, like, like somebody could have fucking told you all the shit that you know and you're not going to fucking believe it. You're not going to. I'm the type of motherfucker, I got to stick my finger in that light socket. I got to shock myself. The dare and I got to shock myself again and again and again. And I'm about the fourth time <laughs> be like, okay, we've learned our lesson. But is it still fucking hot? You know, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. But. I'm just that guy, so I did that, you know. You and are I, that guy. I pal. said it. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I said, dude. I shocked myself enough. I know now. One of the one of the things that I tried to carry through uh, my book when I wrote it was, what can I take from my experiences and my traumas and my struggles to give back to the average person who hasn't endured those kind of struggles? There's not very much. There's very very little about your life that is relatable to anybody watching this fucking episode of impulsive or reading your book well now but <laughs> you know ask logan the the earlier parts like somewhat you know i look i had a lot of fucking failures in my sure, life you sure. know what i'm saying like you know maybe everybody ha hasn't lost their virginia to a mexican hooker at 13 you know what i'm saying like everybody didn't spend their senior year in jail but he like, had never kissed a girl yeah he had never kissed a girl yeah, so I mean, I didn't even know where the pussy was. Yeah. Like back then, we didn't have the internet. Motherfucker, you don't understand because you're young, dude. Back then, we didn't have what internet. You, what do you mean, dude? You did not mm -hmm. grow up mm -hmm. without internet. North Korea. I see. I, see. I grew like, up. I grew up. You in North grew Korea. up with internet in North Korea. No, yeah. you didn't. We grew up in North Korea. <laughs> no <laughs> internet. I'm just saying. The Spice like, Channel, 116. Like, it's different when you got Pornhub and you could see a chick with three dicks in her. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know three dicks could go in a girl, right? I didn't I know saw one would blood. go. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, it was just a different thing. And and uh, I just, you know, I, like I said, I didn't have a fucking, you know, glamorous upbringing for sure. Um, and it wasn't all highlight real shit. I mean, I've had probably more than my fair share of um, miserable fucking moments. And uh, I think... You know, I've I've had a, a path that's had a lot of good and a lot of bad, but the, you'd be surprised. Some of the earlier stuff is probably relatable, um, and maybe maybe worse than most people have gone through. I've had like the highest highs and the lowest lows. Yeah. So maybe in that sense, it's not. But um, do you think you're used to that? Because the whole gambling thing, you're used to being able to risk it and then lose it. Yeah, I mean, the gambling thing kind of fucked me up a little bit as far as just. Man, just muting your emotion. It, when when you do that for years and years and years, it has, I feel like, a lasting effect. You know, when it you do your relationship, it does. Let me let me explain something. When I first met you, I, I I you know just like everyone, I wasn't sure what to expect. And um, every time I've seen you, it, you you look stoic is the word I'll use. You know, you look like you're at a poker table yeah. with a straight face. And I'm all I'm like, what the fuck is that guy thinking? Like, does he? Does, is he ever sad? Is I see why you asked if I was a sociopath. I can get that. Because I'll be in these situations that I feel like a lot of people will be super soaked. And it's just... And, and the one that I, that fascinated me was um, among all the celebrities that are fascinated with you. And then in the book, you talking about how you were fascinated with the fact that they're fascinated with you because they're the celebrity. And you're just like a guy who tried an Instagram experiment. And it somehow worked because yep. social media was on the come up. But 
when um, Danny McBride from Eastbound and Down, I love him by the way, <laughs> asked you for a picture and, uh, and, and you were freaking out. Bro, I played that stone cold. I was like, yeah, yeah, no problem, man. And then I mounted that motherfucker on my wall the next day. <laughs> <laughs> he blew it up, dude. So, so, so as a, he was like my fucking hero, dude. Yeah. So it took everything. But I didn't know, you know, I didn't know how I was supposed to react. I was like, you know, but if I met the guy now, I'd be like, dude, huge fan. Yours, like, fucking sure. amazing, yeah. whatever. Like, I'd have a no, but I didn't know, dude, this, like, in the beginning, right? So I didn't want to look like a fucking retard. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just like, yeah, yeah, no problem, man. Take the picture, whatever. <laughs> but it's cool. It's cool to see uh, famous people on the come up, like, navigate the ropes. You yeah. you handled it so nonchalant. Like, I imagine you're numb to m most everything. Yeah, like point. I said, man, the, the poker. I mean, dude, imagine fucking winning 10, 12 million dollars in a night and like having to just like, ah, whatever, you know, act like that was no big deal. Yeah. That if you can act like that's no big deal, I can promise you you can act like almost anything <laughs> else is no yeah, big deal. Yeah, and then you would walk out and fuck, you know, <laughs> 10 girls and you would get eat the best food. You would have that, you know, the wag you brought up to by the guys at Encore or Win or whatever. And then, like, I guess a, a, a big question for me is like, do you feel that process of getting jaded? I remember my first time on a PJ. I remember my first piece of Wagyu, but I don't remember the second, the 12th, the 100th, the 90th. Like, do you feel that jading and just overall numbing of, of emotion towards what used to excite you? Yeah, no, I do. And I, and I think there's another piece of that too that a lot of people don't understand. And that's um, as you go up, you readjust your baseline. So my baseline is like here now. And that's not a good thing because everything <laughs> below that is a disappointment, right? So like a Rolls Royce is like, okay, whatever. But a fucking Buick is not okay <laughs> you, you know so it's like all these things are letdowns but then the, the great shit is you don't care about it and so i think that's probably why you know a decent amount of rich guys are unhappy is because they've adjusted their baseline up here and i think you get used to whatever it is like so if you get your arm chopped off a year later the guy that's won the lottery is probably fucking not going to be as happy as you even though you fucking lost your arm like that wouldn't it doesn't sound right to most people but like the guy that loses his arm, he goes down to fucking zero. He can only go up from there. The guy that wins the lottery goes to the top. He can only go down. Is so, that why they say ego is the death of man? Is because once you have it all, you're, you're not even living anymore. There's um, nothing to live for. I say that. I don't know if they say I that. I don't know if that's the ego, though. You I, that's, I say I, that. I think it is. You think it's the ego? I feel I, like no, it's no, like no, what I, you I get think, used to. I think ego is the death of man. I, I, Pr pride pride is, is very much yeah. in the same box and same category. I think it's, it's kind of like... Sir, for example, I'm giving a, a terrible example, but if you're completely faced up to the roof, you can't go, you can't breathe anymore. There's nothing to live for anymore. So what's the point of being here if you've touched everything that's tangible and seen everything you could see? Then there's nothing to look forward to. Man, Mushroom, squeeze, squeeze mushrooms the pulp out of life. Mushrooms and acid. That, and by the way, that's why you see so many of these people have been through every experience taking those psychedelics because all of a sudden they go from somebody who wasn't excited about being in space or jumping out of a plane and now they're walking through the mall like a kid with massive eyes looking at fucking starbucks saying wow or just swimming in the ocean, ocean. like just very yeah. basic like childish right, right. things that you know as a kid brought you joy but then as an adult it's like you know fucking whatever and then you do this stuff on mushrooms and you start to like get that again but i also think that's why people have kids too is because they can get that joy through their children yes. through the most yes. basic things um like your brother is now yeah no he's stoked man he's you do know you want a good. family or no um maybe i feel like i definitely wasn't ready for it before i mean i wasn't really ready for much um other than fucking debauchery i was ready for that <laughs> But it's so it's so funny how that uh, aspect of uh, of, you know, being at the top related to that discussion you had about the poker tables, where how you, you had where the thought of readjusting down to the low limit tables is the scariest thing on earth. And it's like me and him will sit in, uh, you know, the high limits and you go down 10K, then you go down 10K. And the thought of leaving the high limit with the big drinks and the good looking girls and the nice dealers and pit bosses and going to the five dollar fucking tables. Yeah, or you're down 100 grand. Try winning that back bet in twenty five dollars. Chasing. You know I'm like, horrifying. It's fuck, man. Yeah. it's and, and I talk about that with with my buddy Jax as well. You know, there's guys that, you know, they get used to spending. A, you know, my buddy Jax, he was a basketball player and he was i mean he would probably make six seven hundred thousand dollars in his season and then he'd blow it in the off season and then he'd go back and then eventually he didn't get picked up and he really um he had, he had a tough time with that he ended up dying uh i mean it was like 
you know, ketamine and a bunch of other shit. But he, he had just, you know, once he didn't get picked up, he had started like really partying a lot more to the point where I feel like he was almost like, you know, setting himself up to fucking go. Mm -hmm. And it was sad to see that. And at the time I couldn't really give him the great advice because to me, like the thought of recalibrating seemed fucking worse than dying too. You know what I mean? So I wasn't really in a position to give him any advice because I was kind of doing the same thing, like adjusting up and up and up. And so the thought of going backwards seemed horrible. Um, that's so scary. That's, that's but crazy. now I feel like I could have given him, you know, the right advice because now I understand that, like, you can adjust to just about anything. I was actually considering doing this a while back, um, getting a job at, like, Walmart or, like, a valet or something and living on that salary for, like, three months and then coming back into your life and you would appreciate all this fucking shit again. You should do that. Fasting. It's like fasting. You should do that. I think I am. I think I am going to do that. I was thinking about doing some shit like that. I, You'd be a funny guy to greet me at Walmart, though. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably have to shave the beard or do something, you know. You know, it's funny because Mel Gibson, he goes out, and he'll go out and get fucked up, and he'll wear a mask, a movie quality mask so oh. they don't know it's him oh that i i I'd definitely do that if i was that famous it's one of those like custom molds like to the legit face. ones yeah. where you can't tell yeah. does it look but, like a person's like made out of plastic no i mean dude the movie ones if you get a good one i mean what she obviously has the money to do you can get one that you know people won't know but it's not to stay hidden to avoid seeing fans it's to reset his expectations of what life is like as a normal person right or just yeah have fun i think it's so that he can go out and not have all the fucking eyes on him and he can just kind of be himself and not worry about, you know, if he says the wrong thing or, you know, what. and also just like your interactions with people, man, that's one thing that I feel like I've lost. Not that I really was a guy that went out to fucking dive bars and shit, but your ability to just go out and interact with normal people and have them mm -hmm. have normal conversations with you. Like when they come up, I mean, you probably understand this. They just, people don't know how to talk to you. They'll have anxiety or they'll, just freak out or mm. you know it just won't be a normal interaction like you would have had before mm. and so i think you know guys like mel probably you know maybe he just wants that maybe he just wants to go out and have a normal fucking conversation with a stranger without them asking him for a photo or mm. a million mm. fucking questions or getting weird you know well, they just assume that's so funny because that actually happened with us i met you at your house with logan and we shook hands. I was going to introduce myself. I'm like, I'm not a hot chick. He doesn't give a fuck. And I literally just kept it moving. <laughs> but like, I could have sat there and asked you how you were doing, but I did. I chose not to because I just assumed because I just look at your life from an Instagram point of view. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Makes sense. You shower after you have sex every time? Every time. Every time. I noticed that. Does it? Some uh, people don't. Yeah. Lot I shower don't. before and after. Half. That's, a lot the, of, lot that's of one don't. of the biggest reasons I want to make more fucking money. So I get a shower on my plane so I can fucking bang oh, on there and wow. shower. Do you not yeah, fuck? Do changer. you not fuck sometimes because you can't wash off? Uh, yeah, it's definitely better to turn well, a full shower with your sweat. hair too. That'd or be gangster, yeah, like a full, yeah, like uh, the BBJs get, they have them. You get no. I'm saying like usually when, when you shower, yeah. it's like you're getting your hair wet, or, or is it just a body shower? A body shower. Ah, you know this is really weird because I do it every time and it's just the dick. I go and I wash my fucking dick yeah. off. I have, sweat, with, I have to be honest. I have to be honest with him. I do the same thing. But but yeah. here's I have my to question: be honest, You guys are fucking gross. No, because here's hold on, <laughs> hold on. Some guys don't don't, don't even do, that. do that. I think it was Nikki Six and uh, who was it? Nikki Six and Tommy Lee. They went a month and saw who could fuck the most girls, and neither of them were allowed to shower. <laughs> Do you ever? Do that's you the ever? Most, that's the most vile thing I've it ever heard. It seems pretty life. fucking. Nasty. That's gross. That's but I also want to know up. who won. Yeah, I think it's in the book, the the dirt. Like you have to understand that he knows this because he's you know old enough like myself to remember these guys or or to have looked up to these guys in some ways. But like there are people that quite literally still make his sexcapades look minute, and that's, that's fucking that's crazy. What you were saying There's that's of crazy shit. to imagine. Like these dudes were psychopaths. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, or is that not true? I, I mean, don't know. I was oh, going pretty hard in my heyday. <laughs> I fucked nine times in one day. Like there is definitely some. That's that's so that's insane. But like, how does your I'm nuts a, not hurt? I'm a young boy. How is your sex drive that high? Like I'm a young man. I I got maybe I got maybe three in a day, max four max. Well, there's there's different factors. I mean, there's you know there's the Cialis, obviously the testosterone, the stem cells. I mean, those three are a pretty powerful combo. But then also it's kind of like. I don't know, man. It's like that deep seated feeling that there's like a lack. Like when I was growing up, I didn't feel like I got enough pussy and I always wanted more. So it's like in my mind, it's kind of like weed. Like 
I've got obviously enough money to buy weed. Like a fifty dollar bag of weed is not gonna fucking bust me, but I don't spill it. Like I don't want any of that weed to spill on the floor. Like I will pick it up off the fucking carpet, you know, mm. because this is ingrained in me. And I think like the sex thing also is like that, where if I see a hot girl that wants to fuck me, I just feel like a obligation as a man to fuck her. You know, I just do. <laughs> Even if I don't want to, I've like yeah. fucking, you know, yeah, just you, in my mind, I'm like, here we go again. You do fucking it, pussy, just get it done. You know what I mean? What are you not going to fuck this girl? I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, probably not healthy, but I just, always had to do it so but it's god's work i but, felt like i was doing the right thing yeah, you know yeah. the one with the so. nine times was that a specific girl no no this uh, was mul like, multiple yeah it's like, no, it was nine girls like, um maybe i've fucked nine girls in a day and then i've also had sex nine times too but like okay so one time i had a i had a tensum and i fucked six of the girls so that was six right there, but I only got off like twice. Right. You know what I'm saying? But then there was times that I fucked nine actual full times in a day. So how do you, how do you remember all this? Um, well, cause, cause like some, like nine, when it's like a record or it's like a high, high. Yeah. you're like, okay, we're going to fuck the one more time. That's going to get us there. I remember when like seven was the record and I like really didn't want to fuck, but I was like, okay, we're going to like, you know, you get, get the seven, right? We it's, have the, your, my knee touched your elbow story. I'll, for me, that's a, that was a big situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever play in the porn star pool at all? Or was you, or were you, uh, kind of out of it? I've fucked a few porn stars. Um, but. Not too many, mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, I, I definitely have. And then sometimes I've found out later that a chick was a porn star. Um, I bet you're like, ah, oh, makes sense. Uh, yeah. So I mean, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the porn chart chicks weren't like that crazy. Correct. Sometimes the fuck Correct. chicks that were like square girls that yep. fucked me like real nuts, you yep. know? Um, so I think some of the porn girls are probably just like tired of all that shit. And they're just like, okay, they're not let's, clocked just, in. let's just get some missionary and fucking kissing down. You know, we never get this. So I don't know. They're lighting candles and shit. Um, all right, bro. We, uh, we have to wrap up. We, uh, cool. this is how we studio and how he's here for the, for the, his episode. But dude, this was great. Thank cool. you. Thank you for real, for coming on. Uh, what's, book. what, is, what is next? Like what I have, I have to know what, uh, what you got your eyes on? I mean, I think a hundred million dollar heads up match would be pretty fucking strong. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that would be pretty goddamn strong with the guy that I fucking beat for the most amount of money. That I mean, Ignite's doing really fucking well. Cool. I'm super stoked on that. Um, and our nicotine is just going fucking ballistic. Like we're in South America. We're going. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're in the UK. We're going to the UAE. So it's like, I've been focusing a lot on that, and that's been doing fucking a lot. And then. I think eventually you turn this motherfucker into a movie, man. I thought it was a good book. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was like a good story. And I feel like people want to know. And I feel like people are lazy. They might not want to read the book, but they want to watch. You know, and I also feel like people want to see these things. You know, you can describe something, but I think when you see it on the fucking big screen, it's cool. And I think this is a more interesting story than most that I've seen. You know, I think it's like a Wolf of Wall Street with a lot more dynamic. I want you to ask your question. I'm going to say one thing because I had this thought as well. And I'm so glad you said this. I'm so glad we're wrapping up on this note. I, I, you don't have an ending to your movie. I don't. You don't have a. You don't. You really don't have a climax. Yeah. Jo Jordan I, Belfort went to prison. Yeah. No. I. I ended on. I ended on basically like the last really good party that I threw, and to me, I felt like I was kind of like at the top of the mountain at that point of like. I had gone as far as I felt like I had gone way further than I ever felt like I could go. And I knew I had gone as far as like you could possibly go. I was in a, I was, I'm in a house, a fucking $90 million house. I'm walking around. I feel like I could fuck any girl in the whole place. Like celebrities are fucking, you know, stoked to meet me. It was just like, to me, I had like reached it. Like that was my goal. That was my hedonistic, like pleasure seeking goal. And I had gone to the fucking limit of that. Um, and I felt like I had done what I set out to do, you know? And so that's kind of where I ended the book. But I think there's going to be a lot more that's going to happen. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'd like to be fucking president. And I think it's like a realistic thing. I know people laugh at that. But I think if I make billions of dollars and I fucking give it away, the bulk of it, I mean, you could probably keep like 500 million so I'm uncorruptible. And then go in there, <laughs> I think you got a real shot, man. I know you think it's nuts, but... I don't. Yeah. I, I don't. Last question. My last question is... Who would play you in the movie? That's a good question, man. I'm not a good enough actor, I don't think, to play myself. So I would like maybe like a Bradley Cooper, I think. Um, 
Tom Hardy would be good. That's I feel like he's choice. a fucking great actor, you know? And that I feel like he's an choice. underrated actor, too. Huh? Would you take Howie Mandel? You, would you take Howie Mandel? Can I play you in the movie? You? Uh, we would put more hair on him. <laughs> yeah, you might need, a, you might need hair, hair on the bottom of the top. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. <laughs> I let you. How are you can play me in my movie? That's closer. That's at least a little bit closer. All right. We love you, Dan. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks cool, for coming man. on. Hey, guys, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.